is there any overall advice you can give for a young conditioning coach, strength and conditioning coach who comes in in a situation like that? Because a lot of yeah. young athletes uh, want to do this as well, be a strength yeah. and conditioning coach and come in the situation like you say, I coming in and everyone is everyone can be my dad. How I yeah. get respect? How I get? Is there any overall advice you can give out to the young young coaches out there? Yeah, yeah, sure. I I think first of that is be adaptable, which means that you have to be ready for every situation, for training on Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, for changing your training session quickly, from changing the time of the training session quickly, and uh, adapt to to the needs that you you uh, you will face while working with the team. And uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's the most important. I had, I had the second one like uh, 10 seconds ago, but I forgot about that. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. So uh, being adaptable is, uh, is a very important thing. I mean, and the biggest one I look at, you already talked about, and that was a big one you said, it's like, and this is, this is now bringing. Yeah, I got the second one. What is it? Yeah, it's like uh, know the know the principles, not the methods, and I think it's uh, it's really important one. And you can see who knows the principle of of training instead of famous methods right now with uh, with the Corona stuff. Because uh, what what you can see is uh, a lot of people are posting videos online with home training sessions, and suddenly they posting like workout of the day type of thing. When uh, they advise athletes to do, I don't know, 10 minutes of squats uh, and push-ups. I mean, if your athletes really need that kind of a training session, why wouldn't you do that back when you had the barbell stuff? Like your yeah. athlete, for, some of your athletes need maximal strength training sessions. Like Alex, for example, my, my, my football guy. He needs strength and power. He's, he's not an endurance guy. Mm -hmm. So wh wh why should I give him uh, an endurance type of a training sessions? And now when you're aware of a principle, your, your method of barbell training is gone. Now you have to figure out something else. So what can I do in a home environment with that athlete to maintain his maximal strength levels and his power strength and his power levels? So that's, that's the thing that young coaches need to learn that uh, instead of following some methods from, from internet, they have to be aware of uh, principle behind that. So just to give you a hint, uh, Alex is doing like uh, yielding and overcoming isometrics at home uh, in contrast with, uh, with plyometric training. I and he, if he can, he's doing sprints at, I was least, about to at least once that. per week. I was about to say that because uh, it's funny because you bring that up. I was going to say like your last post on your Instagram, you talk about isometric training and that people yeah. should be doing that right now at home. And it's not that hard to do because actually one of my receivers was in here, what, two, three days ago. And he's, he's having knee pain and they can't figure out why, first of all. And I'm like, this is interesting. And he's like, yeah, but I need weights. I need weights. And I'm like, no, I don't think you fucking yeah. do. Um, but it's tying into what you're saying where it's like people are posting these home workouts of the day or of the week or this type of shit. And you just said it, right? Yeah. It's like principles. As a football player, you are never fucking running a 3K, a 5K. So yeah. what the fuck are we doing? You know, I don't know, 200 fucking reps of push-ups a day. To, like th there's guys doing this even on our team, for example. I'm like yeah. really honest, you know, because I'm not a strength coach. Um, and they're doing like 500 push-ups a day or a thousand. And it's like, this isn't going to help you. Like, yeah, at some point, we do need some sort of resistance training. But right now is a perfect time to do what? Step away from that and continue to work on what? Your foundation. Because, like, if you can fucking squat, right? Yeah. You can do some sort of split squat, squats. Like you said, if you could do sprints, that's a big thing. Can you do some sort of vertical jumps, broad jumps? I mean, you're going to be fine at the end of the day, especially core work. Everybody's yeah. freaking out saying, oh, I need weights, I need weights, I need weights. Especially in this time, like, no, you fucking don't. Yeah, maybe it's a time as well for some athletes to recover well from previous injuries, yeah. to improve mobility in, uh, in key areas. Uh, it's time to work on some weaknesses because you, you cannot do the thing that you like to do before. You're forced to do different things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, the workout of the day type of training 
it's a good thing for general general population i would recommend like doing a lot of different things but if you're a professional athlete you should be focusing on improving your performance instead of like sweating your ass off on on the couch and uh improving performance doesn't mean that you have to do strength training like with with a barbell sometimes it means that you like improving i don't know achilles stiffness because uh i'm pretty sure that we're gonna have a ramp up if, in injuries after corona time is over because people do not realize that they're not on the same level as they were before the corona started and they try they, they'll try to jump on that level quickly all the games will start and some of them will have low volume of work on for example achilles yeah. i think one, one of the coaches i cannot remember who posted that that in 2008 they had a lockdown as well and there was a big lump in achilles injuries after yeah. the lockdown finished because those tendons they just lost the, the stiffness after all the time so those athletes they they have to be ready to be at least at the same level once everything uh is on again that's and, and, and that's the biggest concern right now because for example what the state is saying is we just talked about right um next week the 20th is that what yeah. you're saying the same the 20th is supposed to come like the official decision what's about to happen now especially with sports yep like can we start in small groups big groups first of all it's not going to happen off the bat because there's no way they're going to go from a fucking lockdown where you can't practice to full yeah. on but like you're kind of saying right now there is going to be an issue first of all and the big thing we've been kind of talking about is like what are these guys doing already? Yeah. If you're not doing anything already, and then the second they start opening up facilities and so forth, like you just said, injuries, especially with Achilles issues, yeah. it's going to ramp up. And yeah. like, I don't think people understand this. It's like, they, of course, and I get it as an athlete, I've been there. They want to get back to it. They want to jump in. Yeah, but, but they have to be aware that they just deloaded all the tendons in their body for yeah. uh, two or three months. Right. It's like a big holiday. And they, they want to jump straight into the uh, into the competition, and that's not the way you do it. So either either you start slow after, or you work hard right now. So these are two options, in, in my opinion, for professional athletes. They, and they have to figure out the way, or their coaches, how to work hard right now, to avoid all the all the right. all the cool. set stuff that's going to happen. What would you do, in your in your honest opinion, um, when teams go back onto the field? And it, and it becomes poor in terms of, let's say, sprint training, running. Would you limit practice times also as well? They first of all, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trust my athletes. That's the first thing. Because I know some of them will tell me that they worked hard and they were doing the, the running sessions and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they didn't. So uh, it depends. It depends uh, what's going to happen with, with the league and with all the matches and all the competition. If it's going to be full on, which I don't think it's going to be, then, well, it's hard. It's like, you, you, I don't know what, I, what would I do. I would have to talk to, to the head coach because I'm not the one who's deciding at some, at some points. For, mm -hmm. for sure, I will uh, limit uh, the volume of the training sessions. Mm -hmm. I'll try to start slowly again with, uh, with some stiffness uh, exercises for, for the tendons. Mm -hmm. uh, like I'll treat my athletes like we treat them at the, at the beginning of the of the season, mm -hmm. like when they're coming from the from the off season. I mean, not off season from from the transition period, mm -hmm. and we're starting slowly with in the in the off season. Uh, I would have to do some some volume work, maybe lower intensity, maybe some like uh, aerobic capacity back on, and uh, depends on the sport as well. Right, no, and depends on what the athlete was doing before. Right, like and you kind of said, it, it all goes, it all goes hand in hand. And like you said, I mean, especially for us, where it's for the most part, we're having right now on each side of the ball. At least for me on offense, we're having about three meetings, virtual meetings, and like you're kind of tying back before and being a strength coach, and then especially the weight room, that's more team building. So my, my yeah. focus right now is just keeping that team building. Yeah, ha having some sort of control of yeah. them for, let's say. It could be anywhere from three to maybe five hours a week where I have in team building, right? Yeah. But the but the in gym aspects that maybe some of them are doing or training or running, we have no control right now because, like you said, you can't trust them. 
Yeah. So at least the team, the team building part, we have a hold of at least for that aspect. I mean, I mean, there is a saying like in the former Soviet Union countries, like trust them but control them. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, to some point, you you have to trust your athletes. I mean, uh, it's it's your job as well to to create the the relationship right, the of yes yeah, so of mutual trust, because if you don't trust your athletes, like it's going to be pain in the ass to work with them. Right. Uh, you have to explain them why you don't want them to lie. It's not like you're, they're constantly on the exam, but sometimes when the, what they say matters for us when it comes to programming and training session. Uh, and I would rather have an honest athlete that, uh, that the liar, because I can, I can control the training program a little bit better. Uh, but they know that at some point, they know that if they're going to lie that they had the hard session before, mm -hmm. they're going to have an easy session right now. So you, you have to listen to them, but to some point, you have to do your thing, what yeah. you planned before. T talking about the whole trust, right, and having athletes yeah. trust you because that, that's the number one thing in any sport. It doesn't matter if you're – if you're the strength coach, if you're the position coach, if you're the yeah. coordinator, if you're the head coach, if you're the physical therapist, if you're the doctor, you need that trust, right? How sure. important is it for you? And now we're going to tie in into your experience training kids and youth because I know it is a hot topic for you and you love it. Yeah. How would you say that also comes into play when you're also dealing now with young athletes? Because now we know too, that's also going to be an interesting factor also after this whole corona yep. deal. So uh, young, uh, training with young kids and, uh, and, and youth athletes is a little bit different because they not aware, they do not have the, the consciousness of an adult athlete. So some of them are playing their sport five days, five days per, per week, but they don't know why. They just play it. So uh, earning their trust is something a little bit different. Than, uh, than earning the trust of an adult athlete. Uh, with an adult athlete, you, you can have a conversation and you can change your training program a lot, like based on how they feel and what they did and, and, and stuff like that, because they, they, un they understand the process of training. And uh, with, with kids, they do not have that awareness and uh, they just follow the, the program that I made for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do not, I do not negotiate with kids. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel I should actually for all this junior coaches, there comes a lot of sayings what I call it always the January effect. In January, everyone say, oh, after Christmas, New Year, I want to go to gym and I want to practice. And two weeks later, nobody gives a shit anymore what they say, yeah. but how good I want to be. And that's what I heard right now. Also, all the juniors like, no, no, we will be there. We have to do practice again. But I feel you can't push these kids anymore to the edge. Like, I mean, I'm 33, yeah. like my coaches did with me. You know, we had also three times practice a week. And we just did it. Coach said we're doing it. Let's go push yeah. ourselves to the limit. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a matter of, uh, of respect a little bit. Young, young athletes do not respect respect coaches as much as uh, as we did before and uh, one of the things is that the coach do not have the tools right now that they had like a couple years ago i mean you cannot you cannot hit your athlete you cannot scream at your athlete you, you cannot work their ass off like keep them in the gym until midnight you cannot do that anymore mm -hmm. and uh parents are one of the faults i mean one of the reasons that we cannot do that right now we uh, we want it as a, as a society to protect our kids uh, so much that we took away tools from, from teachers. And I do not mean like strength coaches. I mean all the teachers. Right. You, you cannot like force anything into the kid. And it's hard to, to teach them a discipline, discipline right now. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a, that's a huge tough thing. Uh, because uh... yeah, I, ha I have a one story from, from my judo times when, when I was like 12, I think, or 13. I, I can't remember right now. And uh, we were, I, I was pretty good when I was younger. 
and me and two of my friends at the same age were invited to the to the junior camp in the, in the Polish mountains with like 15 and 16 year olds so when you're like 12 the guy who has 15 year olds is like super old for you and uh, the age difference is uh, is huge back then and uh, we had some hill runs I mean like not hill sprints but we were running in the mountains it was like a con conditioning run and the snow was probably up to my waist and uh, I had to run with all those all those big guys and I started to cry I was like oh, I can't run no more and and one, my coach who was also my because uh, I was attending the a sport class and the judo was a profile of that class so we were training uh, in the morning before school two hours then we went to school and after after school we had two hours of a judo session as well so first two hours was more like a general preparation and uh, in the evening we were having a, a judo session and that coach was also responsible for, for, for our whole class. So uh, he slowed down and he was starting to, to run with me, like next to me. And it's like, what's up, Mikey? It's like, oh, it's hard. It's very hard, right? It's like, yeah, yeah. And the snow is so deep. Yeah, yeah, coach, you, you can't run no more. Yeah. Maybe I can help you. I was like, yes, coach, please. And he started to kick my butt so hard <laughs> that, that I was instantly in the middle of the group. Like, and, and, you, and, you, and he was running next to me, kicking my butt all the time. It's like, go run faster. And you can't do that anymore. No, absolutely. Right, right now, it's, uh, it's a prison time. Oh, 100%. I mean, you can't, I mean, it even comes down to parents as well. I remember growing up, I mean, law basis are kind of part of it, but like, my mom hit me. She didn't physically beat the crap out of me, but like, yeah. I knew I did something wrong, or it's like, hey, like, let's go, you know? And I knew, like, oh, shit, I got to get going. It also ties back to me, like, back in the high school and college, like, our coaches, they didn't hit us, but they came at us. They were, you know, they, they motherfuck us. They come, yeah. they call you every name in the fucking book. Yeah, and this is one thing that athletes don't understand. And I mean, there's some words out there they should have called us pussies and bitches yeah. and all that shit. Of course, I don't like doing that with my athletes. But this is the thing, right? We never took it what personally. You knew yeah. shit. I gotta kind of pick it up because you know yeah. if it was in a game, for example, it's like, well, fuck. Like if you keep playing like this, we're gonna lose. Do you want to lose? Yeah. You know, we're gonna practice because there has to be a certain level of intensity. And we never took it personally. That's the big thing. You look at it now with these kids, like you're saying, especially what the yeah. parents are doing, they take it personally and it's not personal. Yeah, it's true. It's just like you caring about the athlete. You want to, your athlete to be at, at his best. Yeah. And that's why you, you're screaming at him like that. It's not like, it's not that you don't like him. No, we, we, we all say it all the time. It's like, if I didn't yell at you or say anything, it's probably because I already gave up. Yeah. You so don't you're care lucky about that, that I'm fucking freaking out right now. Yeah, if your coach is not talking to you, you're in trouble. Yeah, that was uh, it was an interview from, a, a, I think, the Louisville basketball coach. This interview is, like, like legendary already in the internet when he talks about um, different to high school sports and all that stuff. He was, like, saying, yeah, we are now in a time everyone get a trophy for everything. If you finish oh, yeah. first or you finish last. That's fucked up. <laughs> and, and and he said, yeah, there, there is there is in the real life out there off yeah. the sports off there is no second place trophy. Is you get yeah, trophy that's that's the, the good way to raise a pussy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. shit. At, at the end of the day, I mean, this this now ties it back to life. Like life is hard. Yeah, life is hard. And the big thing that I always look at it, and I remember to the days that I started playing football, for example, and when I ran track and, and played um, played baseball and soccer, a little bit of soccer, um, I always knew when I looked at it, I'm like, this is fucking nothing. Like, I, I knew the shit that was going on at home, just being raised by my mom, my dad not being around, my mom struggling, working three different jobs. I was like, that was the real shit. And yeah. I always looked at it, and I'm like, I saw my mom busting her butt to raise me, and I'm like, a simple... And I, we talked about a linebacker, or sorry, running back uh, the other day when we had our, our Easter barbecue. It's like in college, we had these, these hell weeks, two, three practices a day. It would be 35, 40 degree weather, which is not legal anymore. And we practiced. And I looked at it and I was like, it's never that we felt it was impossible. It was a bitch. But I always thought, shit, my mom's out here busting her butt. Like, this is, this is the minimum that I can do and I'm fine, you know? I was yeah. like, this is easy shit. Yeah, it's hot as fuck, but it's only for what, two hours? 
boom, you get back inside, whatever, you know? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's, it's very hard to push push athletes right now, especially in the young young one. Uh, being a youth coach is a, is a hard thing right now. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, absolutely. Yeah. How, how do you look at it in terms of, because I know up, up to recently, are you still working with, with young athletes or how, what's your approach with that right now? Because I know we kind of talked about it privately. I do. Yeah, I, I, I do. Uh, to be honest, I think it's like 50-50 right now for me. Mm -hmm. I have 50% 50 of, uh, of adult athletes and 50% of them are, are young athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, working with young athletes, it's fun because it can be rewarding. Mm -hmm. at, they're at the beginning of their career, uh, but it can be a pain in the ass as well. I mean, you need to find a way to motivate your athletes because mm -hmm. they're not paying for the training sessions. They don't know why they're at the training session. So finding something that will keep them training is uh, it's very important. And uh, some, some, some athletes are, are fun to work with and mm -hmm. some are not. And uh, if I have an athlete that I cannot find a connection with, I'm just like, not training with them anymore. Still. I don't care. It's it's my life, my energy. I, I don't want to waste it on someone who, who's not willing to to put the work in. Right. For example, what do you do personally as a strength coach when you're trying to? Because I know you're going to go through an assessment period and all that. What do you kind of look at when you're dealing with a youth athlete to try to connect, or what, what do you try to? What tools do you try to use to first yeah, see uh, if, to first see if basically they fit your type of personality and standards to train them. Uh, I don't have like any tasks for that. I mean, I try to talk with them and see where they're going and uh, like what's their interests and uh, what's their personality type. Mm -hmm. And I have to adjust a little bit of mine, uh, my cues, my my way of, of coaching them. Some of them need a really calm person mm -hmm. and some of them need uh, a coach who's very energetic and they're screaming a little bit and, uh, mm -hmm. and pushing them a little bit and, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, I think that the most important thing is just to realize that we're not building a 13-year-old world champion, but we're working with 13-year-old athlete who might be a champion in the future. Mm -hmm. So uh, instead of like trying to beat every record in the gym right now, I try to develop some some training awareness, like uh, like we. We talked before when it comes to setup for, for squatting. I know that they're not going to train with me for, for the rest of their career. So I want to, to teach them to be an independent athlete. Like uh, for, for some, it comes to the point that you have to teach them how to tie a shoe because their mother did this for, for them for the whole time. Mm -hmm. they're, they're keep forgetting their gear to the training sessions. And I, and I had a... Uh, I talk with 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 one of my athletes, uh, who was low energy in the gym. I mean, he was very calm. It was very hard to to motivate him, and uh, it was very hard to to see him exploding in the gym. If if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. like uh, he was very hesitant when it comes to trainings. Uh, and when you're working on power and you teach them how to jump and how to throw the med ball, you need maximal intent in the workout so he has to be a little bit angry mm -hmm. uh, when he's throwing a ball and um, when he's jumping and i couldn't like wake him up so i asked him to buy a boxing gloves okay because he was like a 13 year old kid, kid. and uh, we started to to do the boxing sessions like pad, pad boxing at the at the beginning of the session as a warm-up okay and, and suddenly it, it worked out because uh, he started to talk more, he started to to laugh a little bit, he started to be more more aggressive, and uh, at one training session he forgot the gloves, and I asked him like, "Where are your gloves?" And he suddenly turned red. He turned to his mother and was like, "You forgot my gloves!" It's like, "No, no, 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 no!" And she was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot the gloves." And I was like. No, just be quiet. I'm talking to your kid. It's like, no, no, no. I'll go to the shop and I'll buy a new one. It's like, no, mm -hmm. that's not the reason why I'm asking him. Mm -hmm. It's like, listen, where are your gloves? No, no, no. My mother didn't put them in the trunk. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> is, you, is your mother boxing or you're boxing? <laughs> like, no, I'm boxing, but she was packing my stuff. And it's like, okay, so oh, this is, these are your gloves. 
This is your training equipment and you're the one who's training. So from now on, you're the one responsible for the gloves. It's like, no, but I don't have time. Like, what do you mean you don't have time? <laughs> yeah. It's like, look, Absolutely. it's like cloth, backpack, put it on, done. If you're I'm, not sure if you're going to take them, just don't take them out from the backpack. Keep sure. them in the backpack all the time. And, uh, and I, I explained him because he's, uh, he was very good. Uh, he is a very good tennis player. And I explained to him, it's like, there's going to be a time, there's going to be a point in your career that you're going to travel a lot without your mother. And you're going to be responsible for packing your tennis racket, tying your shoe, and bringing everything you need on the, on the court. If you're going to for, forget your tennis racket for, for a game, you're going to be disqualified. That's true. So yeah. your passport at the airport, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, to start the whole we, January. We have that all the time. I mean, especially sending out itineraries and all this stuff for game day stuff, telling guys like the night before. Make sure you pack your stuff. This is that. You know, turn around, send out. It's, it's like typed in bold and red. Check your stuff twice. Yeah. Is, we're talking about grown-ass fucking men, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I've, I've had some stuff, too. I mean, also dealing with the U19 guy that played for me in, in the first league out here back in 2014 in Algoy. Um, he, he was basically old enough to play for us, but basically he was a U19 guy. And I remember there was one game he forgot his cleats. And he told me his mom, his mom packs his bag, and she forgot. And I looked at him, and I was like, huh? I was like, yeah. Dude, mom packs your fucking bag yeah. and it's her fault and you're playing first league Germany? I was like shocked. Oh, yeah. I was shocked. You yeah, know, but, luckily, luckily another player had an extra pair of cleats, but even to this day, I was just like, how the fuck does that happen? Yeah, but uh, now you don't know how to connect with that athlete because if my mother would pack my stuff and I didn't have cleats on my training session, I wouldn't say – my mother didn't pack my stuff. I would say like, I forgot my clits. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, coach. Yeah. I would be so embarrassed. Yeah, like, my mom packs my stuff. Like, but you see, you, you for, for some of them, it's a normal thing. Yeah. 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 And uh, we're dealing with, with more and more athletes like that. But uh, I, have, I have a couple different young athletes, which are really fun to work. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, they're playing the same sport. They're tennis athletes. And you, you just had a one example of athlete for, for not packing his old stuff. And uh, two other kids who are at the same age are traveling by buses uh, around the city from training session to training session. They, they always on time, they're, they're ready to work and uh, they train the same sport at the, and they're at the same age. So it's, uh, it's, it's a matter of, I don't know, I don't know raising a kid in, at home probably. That, that's true. I mean, just one last example to move on a little bit. I mean, I had a guy that I first started, he's a young man now, actually. By the time he was 14 years old. And this yeah. is probably the most prepared athlete I've ever had, even even coming to, like, adults, where yeah. he had everything packed. His stuff was always perfectly packed. He had his uh -huh. meals. And this kid had yeah. high school. Like, he was in school. He would go straight 6 o'clock in the morning to the gym, work out, school all the stuff in the evening, come to practices, and he would go by by – because where he lived was in the mountains, basically. So yeah. he would ride his bike like 30 minutes, 20, yeah. 30 minutes into town, then take the train there to the next city where we were at, out here down south of Germany. And then from there, you know, sometimes he had a second bike locked at the train station just to get to the practice facility and back. And he did this shit for years. And, of course, he's going to forget stuff here and there. It's normal. Yeah. But he always had his shit prepared. I don't think I've ever had anyone else, older, younger, who was like him. And he had the right mindset. Like you to kind of talk about like we kind of talk about a little bit where it's like, you know what, this is the type of guy that I can literally, he has all the right attributes to make a monster. Kind of how you, fuck yeah. you know, where yeah. it was like, I never had, there was one time he was late and, and I did it to, to kind of joke with him. I was like, oh, you're late. I see how it is. And he's like, no, no, no. Like this yeah. is, not, it was just a joke with him, you know, but he, he, he felt so bad that he was late like 30 minutes one time. You know, those are the guys you want to have. That's uh, that's the guy that we were talking about last time. I have a, a similar athlete. 